Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Miss Faye and this is my world. Today's topic is hopelessly in love with a narcissist. <laughs> hopelessly in love with a narcissist. Before we get started, I want to say welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to all the new viewers, all the new subscribers, and welcome to you who have been with me from the beginning. I really appreciate you. Now let's dive into this topic. Hopelessly in love with the narcissist. All right, those of you who are new to the channel, let's briefly describe what a narcissist is. A narcissist is a person who has accepted a demonic energy. All right, you know, <laughs> we have all heard about people being possessed. Demonic possession. That's what a narcissist is. It's a person who has been possessed by a demonic energy. That's it. I don't care what he looks like or what he has. If he is a narcissist, he has a demonic possession. Okay? All right. Let's read this letter and see what she says. She says she's hopelessly in love with this narcissist. Okay. And uh, this is a really serious and gripping letter. She says, I know that dying or ending my life is not the solution, but I have no support. Not even from family who cannot or won't understand. And I am praying that your wisdom and words that address where my pain is coming from will help me to move on. Yes, okay. Well, if you're dealing with a narcissist, that's where your pain is coming from. Directly from the narcissist. You've read my letter on Embrace the Feeling of Being Alone. My narcissist, who was helplessly in love with me for 12 years, I found out that someone told me the truth, that he had been lying to me for 12 years, which caused me to sell my home and move two hours away. I was so destroyed. All right, you know what? Let, let me stop right here. I don't know what it is about a narcissist and getting you to sell your home. But uh, I was involved with a narcissist and this was on the agenda. He came in and uh, he wanted to take me around to new homes. We can live here and we can live there. I told him, <laughs> I have a place to live. I have my own home. What, what are you talking about? Oh, we need a bigger place. I don't know what it is with narcissists, but I found out later, after the discard and everything, I found out that this same narcissist had tricked so many other women into selling their home and moving in a bigger home with him. Then they find out what a monster he is and they don't have a place to go. They, they don't have a place to go because nine times out of ten, he's used the woman's credit to even get the home. Narcissists, mm -mm, because of the way that they operate, they a lot of times they don't have it. So they're looking for a woman to support them and support their evil ways. So they come in looking for a successful woman who has her own place, got her own finances, got her own car, got her own everything. And here he comes. Pretending. They're pretend that they have it all together. You see? But when you dig in and you take a very close look at them, you'll find out that it's all smoke and mirrors. That's all it is. Smoke and mirrors. And ladies, if you... Uh, Meet a man, 
and he's trying to convince you to sell your place and go into a bigger place with him, I advise you not to do it. I advise you don't do it. Keep your place. If he wants a, a bigger place for you and him, let him buy it on his credit, on his dime. And then you'll have two places. You can go over there and live with him as long as you want to. But if it fails, you can always come back home to yours. All right. I wanted to stop and, and put that in because I know a lot of women who lost their home playing this game with the narcissist. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's see what you did. I bought a new home and tried to get through it for a while, but over the course of five years, I found out that he had started seeing a young woman, half my age, 20 years younger than him. He told me that I was just too far away. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. All right, so you sold your home. You sold your home and you moved two hours away from him. Okay, so now you bought a home and tried to get through it. But over five years, you found out that he started seeing a younger woman. And he told you that he did this because you were just too far away, for two hours away. But you can remain friends. He told you that because he'll just come and sleep with you now and again and, you know, drain you for whatever you have left. That's why he wants to remain friends. He has nothing for you. I met him when I was 55 and he was 69. He used up 12 years of my life for nothing and I am now 68 and he is 75. He has gained love, peace, happiness, and my life is miserable. After I gave him my heart, my love, my loyalty, my trust, unconditionally. And then he threw me away. I recently found out that he married that young woman. And had begun dating her even before I moved. I saw the wedding pictures, and I have tried to be strong, but I can accept that he strung me along for 12 years and lied to me every single day. He married another woman after making me his wife for over a decade. Okay, I guess you mean you were a common law wife. Okay, but that's something that you accepted from him. You accepted it. So you can't blame him for taking advantage of you when you just allowed him to do it for 12 years. You see? And you lost everything in the process. I have not seen or spoken to him in almost two years, I guess. I chose to go no contact and not once have I reached out to him. I changed my phone number. All those years and my life is in the toilet. I lost my small business. I started to get over him. I had back surgery. I've been fired six times from jobs I took to survive. I never met another man who was ever going to respect me and only use me. And I have been alone for five years. I am on welfare, social security, and was in a near fatal car crash. I am on four antidepressants. I'm seeing two therapists. I have had two surgeries for accidents. I've had from living alone in confusion. I am no longer as active as I was. I cry every single day. 
I keep going because the meds do work to keep me going and live to see my granddaughter grow up. I have no hope, no love, no friends, no man. And I struggle financially now because of so many misfortunes and responsibilities that are overwhelming my life. Now you say here that you have been capable, intelligent, resourceful, attractive, confident, retired school teacher who has been fighting for her life. But now I need help. Not from family who blame me. Not from therapists just doing their jobs and no friends who really care. All right, then let's see if we can. Now, I'm going to attempt to explain this to you in a way that I ho that hopefully you will understand it. All right, because this really can change your life and save your life. You got to understand what you were dealing with. You were dealing with a demon for 12 years. 12 years this demon was working on you from the inside. Tearing you down from that confident, intelligent, attractive woman that you were when you met him. Because that's why he came to you. That's the demon's purpose. To destroy. To destroy people, period. And this demon came to you. Now, demons don't love anybody, but, you know, you fell in love with the demon. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, from my spiritual awakening, I learned that it wasn't love what I felt with the narcissist. It was actually a trauma bond. And that's what you had for 12 years. 12 years, a trauma bond with that narcissist. It was never love. And I'm sure you were giving him your all unconditionally. And he was just taking it. Just taking it. Because his mission, his evil mission, was to destroy you. Now you say that the narcissist left you for a younger woman? He was probably cheating on you the whole time anyway. And you were just mere supply. Now, I don't know if you were the main supply because you didn't say that he married you. I'm, I'm looking back at your letter. You say that you were with him for 12 years. But uh, was it an on and off? Did you actually live together? Because, see, narcissist has to have a main supply. And then everybody else is just added supply. You see, you could have been one of the added supply. Because in your letter, when you say um, in your letter here about that he lied to me every single day because he could not give up his wife, she would be deported, or his kids, who I never met. Where were these people? So maybe you were just a sad chick. You see, from your letter, it sounds like uh, that you were just a side piece. You were not, he had a wife. Unless you're talking about the young wife that he just married. That, that in your letter, that was a little confusing. But um, being here nor there, that's not the point. The point is that you were involved with a, de a demon, a pure demon. There's no other way to, to look at it. And he left his demonic energy in you to continue to, to destroy you, even from afar. Even though he has left you, and what and going off with another woman, that evil energy can still manipulate you and make you feel like you want to die. 
because <laughs> let me tell you something narcissists have left people dead and you know the medical community they just look at it like you know you suffered from a heart attack or a stroke or a broken heart or whatever the narcissist works you from a spiritual perspective from your inside he rips everything that that you are from you and you feel like nothing you feel lost you feel confused this is the purpose the mission of the narcissist so really you are just going through what the narcissist intended for you to go through and don't be surprised if the narcissist tries to come back to you and uh, hurt you some more. That's if there's anything left to destroy. He won't come back if you're already destroyed and he can't get anything else out of you. But if he feels like there's some resources or something left in you, he'll be back to get it. You need to love yourself and get a handle on yourself. Get a handle on what's really going on. That evil demon left energy in you. You are bonded to him. You see, that's why you think about him. That's why you're crying. That's why you feel like you're dying. You want to die. You can't make it. You've lost everything because of the narcissist. That's why he came to you, to destroy you. The narcissist comes to destroy all of your hopes and all of your dreams and leave you in devastation. And they're happy. You know, this man who uh, took advantage of you for 12 years. And you say in the letter uh, that he's off having a happy life when you're in misery. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Narcissists are not happy. They put on a, a facade for you to make you think that everything is lovely with them. Now, this is what happens when the narcissist goes to the new supply. The narcissist goes to the new supply the same way that he came to you in the beginning. Twelve years ago when he came to you, and made you fall in love with him. With the love bombing and all of that. He does it with every new supply that he comes in contact with. The same thing. But the new supply. You know, he'll just give them enough to come back later. Because he has a main supply somewhere. And in your letter, it really didn't sound like you were the main supply. You could have been one of the additional supplies only because she mentioned that he had a wife how do you heal from this and that's what you need to heal from this and all the talking and crying and trying to figure it out it's not going to work it's not going to work because it's spiritual it's spiritual you you're dealing with somebody who was demonically possessed you're dealing with that demon you understand and that demon knows you that demon reads you so that demon knew how to hurt you deep how to destroy you deep how to make you trust the demon and give him everything you had and then he leaves and goes to a younger woman it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything the younger woman could be just a stopover. <laughs> he'll go and he'll take whatever he can from her. And go to another one if he hasn't already. Usually narcissists have a lot of supplies stashed everywhere. I remember when I was with my narcissist, he told me, he said, you know what, I know a lot of people. And it didn't dawn on me what he was really saying. But what he was saying is he got a lot of supply just waiting for him to show up again. Just waiting for him to show up. You see, um, he does not love anyone. This 
demon is incapable of love. Incapable. That part of this person that was able to love left that person a long time ago. Long time ago. These demons have been with these narcissists from early age, from childhood. You see, and I was uh, looking at something the other day where the demon influence is a gradual thing. It's not just a, you know, all of a sudden he jumps in you and yeah, you this. No, it's a gradual thing. And I believe that many times people who are possessed may not know that they're possessed. They're doing things that is normal to them, but it's evil and destructive. The demon is in charge of it. I remember um, when the narcissist would hurt me or even make me cry or something like that. You would see him smile. See him smile. That's their intent, is to destroy you. See, once you understand this and get you get this in your mind, you can, you can get a handle on what really happened to you. But as long as you just think, oh, this man, you know, he left me and he likes, he, he took a younger woman and all that and made me lose everything I had. No. As long as you take it like that, then you're going to be hurt. But when you come to the understanding that you were dealing with a super natural energy, you can come to terms with it. And the only way that you can combat it and get yourself healed and back to being strong and confident again is through spiritual healing. That's the only way. That's the only way. Because you got to heal a soul tie or your life would never change. Your life will continue to go down, down, down until you are dead and out of here. You understand? Don't lose hope. You have hope, but you got to start on your spiritual journey. In the description, there's a link. How to start your spiritual healing. You need to watch that video. And in essence, what you're doing there, do your affirmations every day. And we do them on the channel, so if you watch me, You'll get an affirmation every day. And these affirmations, they're simple, but they are powerful because they change the way you think about yourself, which in turn will change all of this bad luck that's happening in your life. It will change that because you'll change with these affirmations from the inside. It'll change you deep in your psyche. To love in yourself, which changes your reality. You understand? Now, the next step, you got to go into meditation. And what is meditation? Meditation is when you sit quietly in a quiet place. Try to clear your mind. Just try to clear it. Which means don't sit there and think about all the things you got to do today. And all the problems you have. And how awful you are. If you have trouble clearing your mind. Then visualize yourself in a happy place. Sit and visualize yourself in your beautiful happy place. You see. And before you know it. Spirit will connect with you. And your intuition will become stronger. And start leading you on the spiritual path in a positive direction. It'll take, t tell you steps to take. When I started my spiritual journey, I was led to start reading a lot of spiritual material. And it opened my eyes tremendously. And uh, a lot of this material is in the description. Recommended books to read. This is how I started. And it opened up this whole new reality for me. Because, you know, I was just like everybody else. Going through these hardships, you know, this bad luck happening every day, you know, things like that. 
my life changed. My life changed to a more prosperous and happy life. Happy life. And yours will too. Don't lose hope. There's always hope. And you can always change. The power is within you. Don't look outside of yourself. You know, you're going to the church. You're going to the therapist. You're going to everybody out here, somebody. It's in here. You want to connect with the divine source for all healing. Go inside yourself and love who you are. Love who you are. Stop accepting toxicity in your life. If you are around toxic people, you need to remove yourself from it. Now, from your letter, you say that uh, your own welfare, social security, and all that, listen, on your spiritual path is abundance and prosperity. But you got to have faith. You got to want to change. When you change, the universe will begin to bless you with abundance. But you need to be on that path, the path toward goodness. See, this narcissist puts you on a path toward destruction. That's why your life is going to hell. Because you're on that path. You want to turn it around. And go toward a path of happiness and abundance. I hope that you understand this message today. And I really hope that it helps you. There's always hope. Hope. And faith. Faith in yourself. Faith in loving yourself. Faith that the divine source loves you. And wants you to be happy and abundant in this life. But there are evil forces who want you to be miserable and to live in destruction, heartbreak, and sadness. You don't want to go there. Turn away and get on the path to spirituality. Now I want to thank you so much for supporting this channel. Thank you so much for your comments. I really appreciate them. And I know that others appreciate them too. Because many of you have information you want to share. Share it in the comments. I read them and we all read them. And we're all on this train to ascension. Wanting to learn. Wanting to know. So don't hesitate to let us know what you think. I want to thank you so much for your donations. I really appreciate them and it really helps the channel to grow. I wish you all the best, much happiness, and I really hope to see you next time.